the streets of Hillbrow have become synonymous with crime, sex work and HIV. But we don't know how many sex workers there are in Hillbrow or in South Africa. That's because they're forced to go into hiding. But that doesn't mean they don't have lives too. Snowy is 25. She's a man who feels like a woman. Snowy goes to Bible study in church every Friday at a shelter for the homeless. Amidst the crowds of displaced and dispossessed, she says she feels accepted, loved. She comes from a religious family and says that's perhaps why she had to leave. My father was very strict, very, very strict, you know. That was the main thing that makes me run away at home all the time. My father used to beat me a lot, big time, you know. Sometimes if only we sit in watching TV and I would say, oh, this lady is wearing a nice shirt or a skirt, you know, then I know that my father will start beating me from them. What am I doing about the lady stuff? What do I want from there, you know? Yeah, it hit me for that. So that's what kept, kept me running away from home. Here, she has at last found acceptance and forgiveness. She helps out at the soup kitchen, scoops out the food, washes the dishes, eats a hot meal of beans and pap. Then she goes home. The Bible says, I believe that the God that I'm praying is a living God. Mm -hmm. No matter how wrong or bad am I, when I come, when I go to his face and beg for his forgiveness, he'll forgive me immediately. Mm -hmm. Immediately. He's a forgiving father. He's a hearing God. He's an answering God. At any time, he'll answer my prayers. At any time, he'll heal whatever illness that I have. At any time, the God that I'm praying will take away all the problems. It's just that in life, God gives you a small and a test, kind of like an exam for you to pass in order to get to the next step. You can't say, ah, 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 ah. God doesn't want me, God will judge me, God will do what? No, 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 no. Not the living God that I'm praying. Not the one that I'm praying. He loves me. She used to live with her boyfriend, the only man she's ever loved. But when he left her to move back home, she became disillusioned, cynical about relationships. I was once in love. Um, I had a boyfriend. 2005. I was very in love with him. I, one day he decided to go back to where he's from. He was from Kozulu Natal. Since that day, I decided that from now on, I'll never date anyone again. Now she lives with a friend and street side colleague. Snowy lives in a makeshift shelter behind a disused building in Hillbrow that's now home to countless squatters sleeping on bare floors. It's not even a shack. It's Johannesburg and it's summer, so it's raining. Everything's wet, inside and out, and the former courtyard beyond the curtain she uses for a door is now a place where the transitory residents of the block dump their rubbish. It's slick with grime, muck, the detritus of rot, the smell of deprivation is overpowering. Snowy's getting ready to go to work, doing her makeup by the light of a lone candle with a broken shard of mirror. But the rain's getting heavier. It's too wet to work the streets tonight. No one wants to buy a wet girl, Snowy says. She'll have to manage without a night's earnings, about 400 rand, and will wait until tomorrow. It's windy on Oxford Road and cold. Snowy pastes on a smile and goes to work. I used to go to the clubs, get people to propose and buy me booze, take me home. Then the next day, he chased me. So then, I decided people who buy me booze, they shouldn't. They should give me money. I give them all they want, then I bounce. That's when I started to do my business. I started by myself. And I never wanted anyone to know that I was a sex worker. I would go to a shipping or a club or tavern, sit by my booth, 
make few dance moves. I know that each and every guy will pay attention unto me. Then I sit down, they come, they start proposing. I say, uh uh, I do not do, I love you. Let's speak in terms of money and business. How much do you have? Then he said, I love you, I have this money. Okay, it's fine. Let's go on the passage. I do my quick business, I come back, I get the next client. That is how I used to make money and buy myself clothes, you know. She says sometimes she has eggs and cleaning products thrown at her by disgruntled wives from the safety of their luxury cars. And when the police come looking, she has to run. Snowy was recently diagnosed with HIV. She got tested because she was raped by a client, a serial rapist who targets male sex workers, who took her to a field, stripped her naked and left her there. He took me to that open field. He commanded me to strip naked. So I did everything that he wanted me to do in order not for him to harm me more or think of killing me, you know. I did everything that he commanded. I stripped off my clothes. I left them inside the car. We went outside the car. That's when he started raping me and beating me up repeatedly without condom. Oh, and then he left me there on that open field. Now she's on antiretrovirals, eight pills a day, taken promptly at half past seven in the evening. When she was diagnosed with HIV, she found out she also had herpes, a sexually transmitted disease, but she couldn't go home, so she asked the clinic for help. I asked her if many sex workers get diseases from clients. Yes, 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 yes. Cause, um, and most of them, they do not talk. Um, because sometimes you find clients that will say to you, um, let's not use a condom, I'll pray this much. I mean, um, a bigger money than what we usually charge, you know? And if I'm desperately, I'm desperate and it's one o'clock, definitely sure, I will take it. Gerrit Moritz is an HIV program officer at the United Nations Population Fund. He's been researching the lives of sex workers in South Africa for several years, and he says it's difficult for them to access health care because of the stigma involved. Gerrit says they're often turned away at clinics and made fun of when they report sexual violence. Being turned away by those you're asking for help, now that's something Snowy can testify to. I called the police, I think his number with me, they went and arrested him. After the arrest him, he was released uh, after two days or so. Yes, then uh, my case didn't even went to court because, um, um, what's this? Um, the senior prosecutor of Hebrew court told me that his aunt gonna proceed with the case, his aunt gonna prosecute the guy because I'm a sex worker and sex working in South Africa is illegal. All the charges of assault, robbery, kidnapping and rape were dropped. Gerrit believes it's time for the government to decriminalize sex work, even if it's just to fight the stigma. Well, a sex worker is not an entity that's I or a person that's isolated from family, from community. Um, you know, a sex worker needs uh, and has the right to be loved. Uh, they have partners, they have sexual partners outside of what their working environment uh, entails. Um, so they have challenges in, in uh, interpersonal relationships, in finding love, in caring for children, in, um, you know, they also have dreams of where they want to be one day. Um, you know, they're a full spectrum of a human being and you need to look at that in the context of family. Uh, they have children um, and often, um, you know, they want the best for those children and they want to see those children go to school. So they're dealing with the same kind of things that every other South African is dealing with. You know, they're not a woman in a boardroom whose children go to a, a private school and who have to make a sale or something, you know. They also have to make a sale. They also have children that need to go to school. They have to balance uh, their budgets. And they need to do that within a protective environment. They need to do that knowing that they can access health services if they need, that their children can access education without uh, any form of discrimination. So, you know, there's a life being lived there and a life that needs to be protected. And we need to do that within a human rights uh, approach. 
Snowy does her best to support the rest of her family. Her mother is dead, and so are her two oldest siblings. She was close to her older sister, and she misses her. She's the one who knew what I was doing in Hebrew. But ever since I got to Josie, I never laid down or give up on life. I always wanted something that will make me somebody one day. No? And I went through a lot. But I love home. She tries to bring clothes and money for her niece and nephew whenever she goes back to her township in Springs. She's teaching the two little ones how to sing and dance. And she misses the reassurance of home. Each homecoming is precious. Because this is a place where... This is a place where I get a peace of mind. Sleeping without thinking of money. Sleeping without thinking, where am I going to get the next plate? Sleeping, not worrying if um, a police going to come in with the rubber bullets. Sleeping without thinking, I should go out and make money, clients and everything, you know? She's popular in this neighborhood. Her friends say they worry about her. This is a friend. We, we love okay, her. And we uh, know exactly yes. what she's doing, so we just yes. wonder. On, so most is of she us, okay we haven't or? went where she's living. Mm. We don't know what's going on mm. there. Just she came here yeah. telling us what this happened, and this, and this, this and that. We always pray for her. Mm. When she's around, then we know oh, everything is okay. But then she's not around. We worry because we know that the work that she's doing is very yeah, dangerous. It's dangerous. You experience a very, uh, you know, a lot, lot of things. Yeah. This isn't the life she pictured for herself. This isn't what she chose. Snowy says she wants to come home for good, but for now, life is about survival. Nastasia Tay, Eyewitness News.